This question is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, not too much to overanalyze here. You have a girl who's had amenorrhea for 16 months, and this is on a background of increased physical activity. She's been running track for school uh, for 20 months, and she only eats 1,000 calories daily. So this is our uh, typical scenario of a low BMI girl who is going to have abnormal GnRH pulsation. That's her answer here. Uh, abnormal GnRH pulsation leading to amenorrhea. Uh, this is called hypothalamic amenorrhea. Okay, the US simile answer can just be abnormal GnRH pulsation, decreased GnRH pulsation. I've seen both. The mechanisms in the literature have not been fully elucidated. Uh, there's proposals such as just simply decreased adipose tissue, decreased estrogen production, that that can cause abnormal GnRH pulsation. There's also proposed mechanisms as far as ratios of uh, leptin and ghrelin, but without getting pulled into and overthinking detailed mechanisms, just when you see this type of question on the US simile, you're just going to go, boom, abnormal GnRH pulsation, that's what they want. Now, what makes this even more weird is that abnormal GnRH pulsation is also the answer for, on the opposite end of the spectrum, girls who have high BMI with polycystic ovaries. So, uh, if they give you, let's say, a girl who has BMI of 28 and she's had abnormal periods and the mechanism is anovulation, cystic ovaries, uh, abnormal GnRH pulsation is also the answer, okay? So I don't want to go off on, on, on tangents, but I just want you, for the sake of this question, uh, when you see abnormal GnRH pulsation, you, you should uh, say, okay, that's either going to be a low BMI girl, increased physical activity, that's called hypothalamic amenorrhea, okay? Or it's going to be, on the other end of the spectrum, high BMI girl with polycystic ovaries and ovulation. Okay, so, and that's due to insulin resistance causing the abnormal GnRH pulsation. So looking at the other answer choices, ACTH secretion, obviously not related here. So increased ACTH secretion from the anterior pituitary, that's just the cause of Cushing disease. Okay, uh, ACTH secretion can also be uh, ectopic from bronchogenic small cell carcinoma. Uh, causing Cushing syndrome, okay, and uh, aromatization. That aromatization occurs uh, from granulosa cells in females, Sertoli cells in males. So those cells secrete aromatase, which is going to convert androgens from the theca interna cells in females and the Leydig cells in males. The aromatase is going to convert those androgens into estrogens, okay. So you can have aromatase deficiency. Uh, patients who have increased androgen levels because they can't convert those androgens over into estrogens, but it's just not our uh, answer here. It's just, it serves as a distractor when you're not sure of the mechanism for why a girl with low BMI would have amenorrhea. Ovarian follicles, okay, that would be our polycystic ovarian syndrome. As I just talked about, insulin resistance, if we had a high BMI girl in this situation. And then 5-alpha reductase deficiency, that's going to be the answer when you have what's called quote unquote phallus or penis at age 12. They're going to tell you that uh, a 12 year old or 13 year old girl is brought to the GP by her mom. And over the past six months, she's grown four or five inches and she has increased acne. And on physical examination, her clitoral hood is three or four centimeters. It's literally phallus slash penis at age 12 where Five alpha reductase is the enzyme that converts testosterone into DHT, dihydrotestosterone. DHT is necessary for external male sex characteristics. So if you have a deficiency of that enzyme, you have obviously decreased external male sex characteristics, but at pub the onset of puberty at age 12, you get a surge in testosterone, which can help override the deficiency of that enzyme, give you more DHT, and you get uh, essentially a growth of the clitoral hood virilization starting at age 12. That's going to be the vignette on the USMLE for 5-alpha reductase deficiency. That's it for this question, okay? Lots of discussion we could do for all of these things, but just your summary slash take-home point is that if you get a low BMI girl, anorexia, and you get amenorrhea, you're going to choose abnormal GnRH pulsation as the answer. Okay, that's it.